Kyler Kellerbeer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. My mission to drink every beer that comes, has come out of Germany continues. I think it might beat me, but not before I've tried some of this stuff. This is the Kyla Keller beer from the Kyla Brauhaus. Now, the Kyla Brauhaus is a microbrewery, and Kyla in German means boar, not as in boring beer, the animal and it actually looks it looks like a, a boar's head on the front drinking a pint when was the last time you saw a boar drinking a pint personally never but i've heard of a dog who likes beer and here's two of them i'm not i'm not taking them up he's eating something and his farts are absolutely disgusting i don't know what it is that he needs to pull through with a Christmas tree. Something is not right downstairs with that dog. That right, Percy? Honestly, he stinks. I've been working here all day and he sits, he sits beside me every day when I'm working. But today has been a struggle because of his Aris. I'm not gonna lift him up and show you because I fear if I put my hand under there, something's gonna come out that ain't gonna be too pleasant. And I was eating habanero crisps and one of them fell on the floor and I think he got it, so it could be that. Last time he got colitis, something wrong, that's an inf inflammation of the colon, and it wasn't good. It was, well, it was pretty fucking drastic actually. We had to put him in the garden for a while, if you know what I mean. Anyway, enough about his Aris. Let's get back to the beer. Kyla, they are a small concern based in Franconia, in what is what I consider as beer heaven in Bavaria and it's one of the over 200 breweries that are based in Franconia. It's got a very very good reputation in fact I'd say it's probably the best region in the world for beer. People talk about Burton on Trent and yes it has got some absolute classics it's also got the fucking abomination that is Molson Coors that's brewed up there I think Carlsberg is it no Carlsberg are in Bedfordshire I think it's Molson Coors and Marston's that are based in Burton on Trent but yeah they're, they're a blot on the landscape, if you know what I mean. That Burton on Trent did have a really good reputation, and there are still some good little brewers out there, but yeah. Oh, speaking of uh, good English brewers, if you're about, this is now the 15th of May 2020. I'm not sure when this video is going to go up, but at the moment, Weatherspoons are doing selected beers for 99p. I went in there yesterday, I had a beer with a mate of mine, and I had a fair few pints of the Nethergate Augustinian. Nethergate are a, an English brewer, they're based in Yeovil, in Somerset. They were doing their Nethergate, which is like a, an amber, they called it an amber ale, dark amber ale. It was effectively a bitter, and it was quite nice, but for 99p, it tasted even nicer. So people who knock the weather spoons, occasionally, they do things that are pretty decent when it comes to real ale. Yes, they serve up a lot of shit, they've got all the crap John Smith, they've even got that, um, was it, is it White Shield or something like that? Oh, is, that's a fucking abomination, that thing. But they, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of it, but you know the one I mean, it's on draft. They do Shipyard as well. I heard someone ordering Shipyard yesterday. Oh, I just thought, you poor bastard. If you've not tried Shipyard, do not fucking bother. It is disgusting stuff. It tastes like dog shit from a bottle, and it even tastes worse on keg, if you can imagine that but it's Marston's. What do you expect from them fucking losers? Anyway, enough about that, let's get back to this. This is a Keller beer. And there are some good Keller beers out there. And I will say that for me, the Hackershaw, the St. Jorgen boy, 
And although it's classed as a land beer, the Gravensteiner from Bitburger, they're three absolutely fantastic Keller beers, in my opinion. I'm wondering whether this lot are going to be any good. Now, as I say, they're based in Franconia. They're based in a place called Lohr am Main, which is the nearest big town would be sort of in between Frankfurt and a place called Würzburg. I think that's how it's pronounced. W-R-Z-B-O. B-O-R-G or B-E-R-G, I can't remember, but it, it's based there. And it's a, a guest house restaurant with its own brewery in there. Now I've seen that quite a lot in the States when I went over there to uh, Washington and in San Francisco as well. They had these micro pubs and they've got them over here as well. It's a, I would say it's a, ph a new phenomenon, but it's a recent thing that you actually see the vats in the pub and the beer comes straight from them vats and it's the freshest it's ever going to be. So if you're in a mic one of their microbreweries where they're brewing their beer and it isn't great, believe me, it's not going to get much better as it travels out. So there you go. Well, not in my experience anyway. There may be exceptions to the rule, but I've yet to come across one. Anyway, let's stop talking bollocks. Let's get this open, see what's going on. Right, before we do, this is a 500ml bottle, it's 5.2%. Uh, it conforms to the Reinheitsger bottle, it says that on the front. Uh, this is the flagship beer of that brewery, I think, from what they're making out the site, it's all in German. You know my, my German pronunciation and understanding, I'm like fucking Officer Crabtree from a lower low. I hear that the Germans are licking for Ronnie. <laughs> I have brought for him a disguise. <laughs> It is a policeman's outfit. But there you go. Uh, this is a Keller beer. You all know what Keller beer is. It's a, basically a cloudy lager. Lots of sediment in there. Bits of yeast. Very flavourful. Occasionally it does have like a little sour note to it. But on the whole, if you get a good one, it's really nice. Very full bodied. Very refreshing. Let's see what this one's like. Right, I guess this. Yeah, all right, mate, calm down. Uh, what else is the state of the beer glass? Oh, it's not too bad. I've changed the dishwasher tablets to platinum. The, the per, is it Purcell? Platinum ones. They're normally pretty good. Oh, have I overdone this? No, I haven't. There is in the glass. Look at the state of the glass. Fuck me. I don't think I've cleaned this. Why is this happening? There's something not, not right, because I've used new dishwasher tablets now and they're still coming out dirty. What the fuck? I'm gonna start doing them by hand now. Fuck it. Not relying on a dishwasher no more. That's bollocks. And that's gonna kill the head on it. Which is a real shame, because Keller beer should be drunk through a head. Always give it a little shake. Get that yeasty goodness out of the bottle. And here it is, lovely cloudy orange color, amber color Ooh, on the nose. Yeah, and there's that sour note again. And I do like that on a Calabria. And there isn't much else to be honest. There's a little bit of bready, toasty type aromas, but they're not big, but that's sour. Esther, I think it is, coming from the yeast, is on there, which is a characteristic of a potentially a good one. Let's see if it is. Post, as I say in Germany. Oh. Quite pronounced sourness on that, from the first mouthful. And then toasted malt, bready malt on the finish. Mmm. Interesting. We'll dive in again. Mmm. 
This is nice, I do like it, but the sourness is quite pronounced on this, which you don't normally find on, for example, the St. Georgian Broy and the Gravensteiner Land Beer, or the Hackershaw Keller Beer, which in my eyes is, is one of the best, along with the St. Georgian Broy. Them, them two are absolutely amazing Keller Beers. This one is good, but I don't think it's as balanced, just from the first two mouthfuls. It might get better as I go down, I'll, I'll keep tasting. No, it's still there. The Hacker Shaw and the St. Gilgan Boy do have an element of sweetness on there. This doesn't, which is different, I will say that. Is it a characteristic of Calabria? Yes, in my opinion there is. The ones that I have tasted, I do detect a, a, quite a sour note, certainly from the aromas, which is coming from the yeast, or the yeast sediment that's in there. Wow, that really does have a sourness to it. It's almost like it's, I wouldn't say it's on a par with the, with the Lambics, but I'm wondering whether the yeast has, there's some wild yeast in there, because that's what you get. You get the lactobacillus when you have wild fermentation or spontaneous fermentation, as they call it. And they do that in Belgium. And there's rumors that the, the bacteria in the air differ from region to region to give it a different flavor. I don't know whether that's true. There may be science to prove that. I've not seen it, but in Belgium, that is widely touted. Hence, if you have ever tasted a Lambic beer and you get that sourness on there, it's, it's very, very pronounced. It's not in that league, don't get me wrong. That's not what I'm comparing it to. But for a Keller beer, it's got a slightly sour note to it. But you still get the, the toasted liquid bread finish on it, which you would expect from a good Keller beer. And as all Keller beers are, this is very full bodied. It's quite nice. It isn't the best, but it is nice. Um, I think this is the, they do make a big thing about it on their website. I think this is their flagship beer. Now they do have the beers as well. They do a Weizen, they do a Hellas, and they do this obviously. But there's, a, there's I think there's four or five different, they do a Pilsner as well. That's right. I'd be intrigued to see what that tastes like, but this to me, it tastes like there may be just a little bit of either wild or spontaneous fermentation going on there. Not a great deal, but it is, it's definitely got character, I will say that. Hmm, nice, nice and different. So what is the verdict on Kyla Keller beer? Well, it's a beer that does have all the characteristics of a Keller beer. The character on it is one that has got sourness on it, or a, how can I put this? I don't want to overemphasize it making, it, making out that it is a sour beer. It's not. But compared to other Keller beers, which do have elements, subtle elements of sourness, this one is quite pronounced. Now, in the grand scheme of things, it's, I wouldn't say to the untrained palate it, it would taste sour, but I can notice it in there. And it's good. It's a characteristic, in my opinion, of Keller beer. But I think... I think with the St. Gorgon Boy and the Hackershaw are quite well, well rounded. Well, they've, they've got some quite nice sour notes to them, subtle sour notes. The dominant flavour and the char dominant characteristic are big toasted liquid bread on the palate and the finish. And you've also got a very, very full bodied beer. This has certainly got the full body to it. It's got the liquid bread finish on it, but I think they've overemphasized the sourness. Now, I'm wondering whether that's, as I mentioned before, whether there's some 
wild fermentation and going on there it doesn't mention that at all i don't think they would probably give that away to be honest but it's nice but i don't think it's up there with the best of them and i would imagine it tastes quite nice in the in the actual guest house and the and the the, the brewery or the micro brewery they've got a bar there as well so i imagine if this was fresh this would taste really nice and i think you might have trouble finding this over here i've not seen it i don't think on any online retailers you may be able to find some that do this some obscure ones like noble wines or something but they're a micro a german micro brewer now i don't really like reviewing beer that is hard to get hold of because when you do that you're going into the sort of craft beer territory and i suppose one could argue that this is a craft brewer if you're a micro brewery could it be classed as a craft brewer well there's just you're just playing with semantics i think but i think if you really made a concerted effort you could find this beer certainly if there's any german viewers out there you could probably get this quite easily my mate normally brought this over for me thank you very much mate much appreciated and he lives in northwestern germany so it's available up there as well so that they must export to i wouldn't say a wide area of germany but it's certainly available in germany certainly the northwest of germany and of course franconia as well but is it worth seeking out um, if you're in the area and obviously you're near the microbrewery then fucking have at it go in there and fucking drink as much of this stuff as you can because i imagine it tastes really nice uh, is it worth going out your way for otherwise mm, well if you can get saint gorgon boy over here then don't go out your way to buy this go out your way to buy the saint gorgon boy because you will not be disappointed and i should do a shootout someone did mention that i should do a shootout between the gravensteiner i can't see that any of the gravensteiner online it's all sold out which is testament to how popular it is now i don't think it's bitburg was a huge concern over in germany and i don't think they'd have too much trouble exporting the stuff over here and it's sold out so it must be doing something right but when i can get hold of the two and to be honest, I really should do the Hackershaw Keller beer and the St. Georgian boy in a shootout because in my mind, they are the two best Keller beers I've tasted so far. The Gravensteiner is up there with them. Whether I can get hold of it or not, I don't know. But sadly, this doesn't really put its dog in the fight, if you know what I mean. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10 because I like that it's got a little bit of soundness, gives it a little bit of character, a little bit different. It's got all the other stuff you'd expect from a Keller beer. Nice, cloudy, full-bodied beer. Liquid bread finish. Very drinkable, very refreshing. It's quite warm out there, actually, now. It's in the uh, 70s. Someone mentioned the other day about uh, uh, they can't get over the fact uh, an Englishman is using imperial measurements and for the weather. I always do the weather in imperial. Most people use Celsius. I always, always use Fahrenheit. I was brought up on that as a kid and it just hasn't left me. And people people have a go at me for that. And English people as well. And I always say to them, well, how tall are you? And they'll say, oh, you know, six foot. And I say, well, right, okay. How much do you weigh? And they say, oh, uh, uh, 14 stone or something like that. Okay, what are you doing? You're using imperial measurements. I'm just using it for something else. I still haven't got my head around Celsius. I know that anything over 20 is, is warm and anything under is potentially jacket or at least sweatshirt territory but yeah that's just me but for certain other things i do use metric building trade always metric measurements i'm not fucking about with doing fractions with inches and all that that's just fucking stupid in my opinion millimeters and centimeters do make sense they're more accurate in my opinion and i've worked with them and I've tried working in Imperial, trying to match up the old bricks. I don't know whether I'm going to go off on a complete tangent here, but as a bricklayer, sometimes you need to match up the old style bricks, which are all done in Imperial measurements, with new bricks, which are metric. Believe me, that is no fun. And you can always tell brickwork that you've tried to do that on, and it, it, it just never works 100%. It's always, it's never uniform, if you know what I mean. But I'm going into fucking way off topic here, so let's just bring it back this beer i'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 solid 8 out of 10 don't 
knock yourself out to try and get it over here online but if you can find it it's worth a punt but on the same note if you can get the Hackershaw Keller beer or the St Gorgon boy on the same site don't go for this go for them too they're the ones you need to seek out and remember beer is working class champagne <laughs>